Welcome to CBT News with Bridget Fitzpatrick. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to CBT News. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up, Jim speaks with Brad McAreevy, president of the Rochester Automobile Dealers Association. But first, here are today's top stories. Tesla has reported that third quarter revenue set another record for the company, but still missed analyst expectations. The electric vehicle maker reported revenues of $21.45 billion for Q3, shy of estimates of $21.86 billion. The company reported a net income of $3.3 billion for the quarter, nearly double what the company earned during the same period last year. CEO Elon Musk blamed rising material costs production ramp inefficiencies, and the strengthening American dollar as contributing factors cutting into Tesla's profitability. Lithium Motors reported its highest third quarter revenue and earnings per share in history this week. Q3 revenue for the company increased by 18% to $7.3 billion, up from $6.2 billion during the same period last year. The company also reported a net income of $330 million, a 7% increase. Brian DeBoer, president and CEO of Lithia and Driveway, stated, quote, We posted strong results across our business lines this quarter while navigating the current environment, integrating a steady stream of acquisitions, and continuing to grow Driveway and Driveway Finance. BMW Group announced plans to invest $1.7 billion in its U.S. operations to build electric vehicles and batteries. $1 billion is earmarked for the automaker's existing factory in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and $700 million for the new high-voltage battery assembly facility in nearby Woodruff. BMW plans to produce at least six fully electric models in the U.S. by 2030. The announcement also included information about a deal to purchase battery cells from Envision AESC. The Japanese-based company will build a new battery cell factory in South Carolina that will supply BMW plants. The Biden administration announced it will award $2.8 billion in grants to projects to expand U.S. manufacturing of electric vehicle batteries and domestic mineral production. The grants are part of the president's $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure deal that will allow 20 companies across 20 states to extract and process more lithium, graphite, nickel, and other materials used in EV battery production. A statement from Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm read, quote, Producing advanced batteries and components here at home will accelerate the transition away from fossil fuels to meet the strong demand for electric vehicles, creating more good-paying jobs across the country. Don't go anywhere. Coming up next is President of the Rochester Automobile Dealers Association, Brad McAreevy. CBT News, 10 years strong. In the first week of October, New York Governor Kathy Hochul announced the state will mandate all new vehicle purchases to be zero emissions starting in 2035. Joining us on Inside Automotive to discuss this development is Brad McAreevy, president of the Rochester Automobile Dealers Association. Check it out. Hey, your state has adopted uh, California's uh, gu guidelines uh, and said, you know, after 2035, there's not going to be any new vehicles that will be sold, that will be ICE vehicles. Everything's got to be EV uh, moving forward after 2035. What's your take on that? Is your, are your dealers ready for that? Do you think the consumers are there? I know it's a very loaded question, but uh, what, what say you on that? Yeah, New York has been on the, uh, the CalZev program since 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not something new for us. We've We've been uh, dealing with uh, you know that particular set of guidelines for for quite some time now. Earlier in this legislative session, New York actually passed a piece of legislation that established a goal of being uh, selling all uh, zero emissions vehicles by 2035. And then subsequent to that, California passed their legislation. CARB adopted their new regulations, and New York formally announced their intent to follow those regulations. So that's the, uh, the story that you probably saw in the news recently that New York uh, formally came out and announced right. that they will follow the CARB standard. Right. And, and that will be the, uh, the goal in 2035. Yeah. And, and do you, you guys ready for it? I mean, it sounds like you're, you're all on board, dealers included. Yeah, look, I, I think the, the dealers are, are certainly working toward that goal. We mm -hmm. wanna be a part of the uh, solution as it relates to the selling of zero emissions vehicles. Our dealers are 
investing. Uh, they are preparing themselves. They're buying equipment. They're training their salespeople. They're doing all the things that I think any dealer would be expected to do. Uh, you know, pretty early in the process, though, yeah. I would say the the thing about this, I, I think that's really challenging, is trying to prepare yourself and invest today, and then figuring out when is the market going to actually curve up to where there's a lot more, first of all, available vehicles in the market. And secondly, when are consumers going to be ready to embrace the, uh, the transition as well? All right, be sure to watch this interview in its entirety right here at CBTNews.com. That wraps up our show for today, but we invite you to join us back here again tomorrow morning for all the latest news and trends impacting the retail automotive industry. And be sure to follow us on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thanks for watching CBT News, the voice of the retail automotive industry. CBT News, 10 years strong.